Have you been TV shopping and noticed the Dolby Vision logo missing from the Samsung section? Or maybe you've tried to play something on your Samsung TV and can't quite figure out why you can't turn on Dolby Vision High Dynamic Range. That's because Samsung hasn't jumped on the bandwagon for Dolby Vision for its TVs, and it doesn't appear like that will change anytime soon. In this video, we take a look at some business strategy by Samsung. In 2014, high dynamic range contrast reached televisions and revolutionized video playback. Its ability to display high levels of contrast between whites and blacks allowed a level of visual wonder for home televisions that hadn't been seen since the debut of 1080p HD. To learn more about high dynamic range and wide color gamut, check out this video. Through all of this competition, Dolby has come out the clear winner in both industry valuations and the fight to get into as many electronic devices as possible. Dolby's early success with the format can be attributed to Dolby Vision's ability to show video at its best through frame-by-frame -frame or scene-by-scene -scene adjustments to contrast controls. These constant adjustments, known as Dynamic HDR, offered a massive advantage over its early competitor, HDR10. The latter only offering a static or one-size-fits-all adjustment to HDR imagery on screen. HDR10 did not offer the same scene-by-scene -scene adjustments, but rather only told televisions a set brightness for the entirety of a show so the black levels were the same throughout, versus changing like in a dynamic format. At the time of this video, Dolby Vision is offered on nearly every streaming platform, gaming console, television, and a growing number of phones. Dolby Vision is by far the most popular and sought after HDR format. It is consistently sought after by movie enthusiasts and gamers alike. Not one to be outdone, Samsung created its own version of playing back dynamic high dynamic range content. Expanding upon the very basic static version of HDR10, Samsung and Amazon teamed up in 2017 and announced HDR10 Plus, direct competition for Dolby Vision. Samsung has a history of holding off on paying license fees to others preferring to create its own technologies or utilizing royalty-free content. By doing this over a long period of time, it has saved large sums of money in licensing fees. These savings are typically passed down to consumers where their television prices and audio equipment are usually priced lower than their rivals. However, the savings Samsung gets in not fielding Dolby Vision is not as much as you think. In a 2016 LinkedIn post, Senior Vice President of Media Solutions at Dolby Labs confirmed that it only cost about $3 to license Dolby Vision software per device. And Dolby Vision is indeed software implemented, provided the hardware is capable of displaying the images. This was confirmed by then Vizio's Chief Technology Officer, Matt McRae. It is not just the manufacturing companies that largely support Dolby Vision. It is also the companies that generate the content we're all watching and consuming it from. Netflix, Apple TV, Disney Plus all provide content exclusively or largely in Dolby Vision. Even longtime competitor to the format Amazon Prime released the Rings of Power in Dolby Vision in 2022, with plans to release some older content in the format such as The Wheel of Time. This is a huge blow to Samsung, who they partnered with to launch HDR10 Plus five years before. When purchasing 4K Blu-rays, it is difficult to find movies and shows in HDR10 Plus, with most shipping in Dolby Vision. Dolby and Samsung are at an interesting crossroads. Samsung's high-end televisions can actually display whites better when compared to many of its rivals and are often noticed for their high output abilities which allow consumers the feeling they are getting a better value because the hardware in many high-end Samsung TVs is comparable to other name brand manufacturers at a lower price point. However, without the Dolby Vision software to properly decode content for scenes, movies and TV shows default to HDR10 and the sheer volume of content released in Dolby Vision means consumers are not getting the best bang for their buck or seeing content the way it was intended to be seen. By not having Dolby Vision built in, it is almost pointless to have such high-end hardware that cannot properly display video as creators intended it. Here, 
Consumers end up losing out because Dolby Vision's 12-bit color capacity means Dolby Vision's contrast and color abilities far outweigh HDR10 Plus's. While HDR10 Plus is overwhelmingly outnumbered by Dolby Vision, it does have its supporters. TV manufacturers Hisense, TCL, Philips, Panasonic, and Toshiba, and several others, all have products that have HDR10 Plus built in. But they usually also have models that have Dolby Vision as well. Sometimes these televisions have both formats. When I asked Dolby Labs if there were any future plans to incorporate Dolby Vision into Samsung products, they simply passed the question over to Samsung. Samsung did not reply to the Movie University's repeated requests for a comment or interviews for this video. It's doubtful if Samsung will incorporate Dolby Vision anytime soon, if ever. The company is one of the top sellers of televisions, and its sales and electronics account for a surprisingly large percentage of South Korea's GDP, giving the company a lot of power to approach issues. Let me know in the comment section below if you're a Samsung TV fan or a fan of another TV brand. This is Movie University, education and cinema.